Welcome to Cutting with the Chase with Rob Chase. Brought to you by the InlandNorthwestReport.com. Alternative news and opinion for the Inland Northwest. And now, here's your host, Rob Chase. Okay, this is Rob Chase with Cutting to the Chase. Today our guest is Jonathan Bingle. Uh, so let's cut right to the chase, Jonathan. Uh, tell us about yourself. I understand you're yes. running for mayor of Spokane. I am running for mayor. So um, my name is Jonathan. I was born and raised in Spokane, Washington. I went to Rogers High School, and uh, I started going to Spokane Falls Community College and realized that I just didn't want to work for somebody else, and so I started my own business, and uh, that was about nine years ago. Uh, went full-time with the business about seven years ago and never really looked back. Well, tell us about your business. Yeah. So my business is called Bingle Enterprises, uh, but many people in town know it as Bent. And so our most well-known brand is Bent Trivia, uh, which is um, you know a large trivia company here uh, in the Northwest. We've got about 25 games in the area. And we do events um, and entertainment services, so even you know corporate events, weddings, uh, auctions, charity events, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well... Um is it like Trivial Pursuits in the, the board game? Yeah, so it's some, a, something like that. I mean, it's question and response, but the thing that I like is um, I like to, I like to, I'm a smart guy and I don't like to feel dumb. And so our, our questions and everything that we do is written in such a way that the average person has the ability to get to the right answer, or at least they never feel like I have, I'm lost. I have no idea what's going on here. So um, it's written in a way for, for um, everybody to have a good time. Well, you know, I love Trivial Pursuit. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, that board game. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, actually, they had an old show on in Spokane. I think you're mm -hmm. probably not old enough to remember it, but it was called High School Bowl. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I represented uh, Kellogg High School. Oh, there. very nice. And, uh, I, you know, I had a C average, but one day I was walking through the library. Yeah. They were having practice, and well, someone hadn't shown up, so they asked me, "Well, do you just want to take a chair, you yeah. know, and fill it up?" So I said, "Sure." I ended up answering everything they said because uh, even though I had a C average, I loved uh, trivia. Yeah, and there's a lot of trivia. You know, yeah, I think absolutely. I, uh, I uh, got to be on and made the team, and uh, then we got on. It was on TV on yeah. Q6, and we the very first. Uh, team we drew was St. George's, and they were all brainy. So <laughs> we got cream. But I did answer a couple of yeah. questions. I answered um, one of them, who were all the stars on Fiddler on the Roof? Yeah. Who played, played Tavia. Another one I actually happened to know this was, uh, you know, what are the six tribes of the um, Iroquois Indians? Oh my goodness! <laughs> so uh, you know, I did did get some. So we got beat. I think it was one eighty to ninety five. They nearly doubled our score. Oh my score. goodness! It was my you know one chance of fame. But yeah, you know, I would go home and I'd read encyclopedias oh, yeah. or uh, uh, a lot of a lot of science fiction, yeah. especially too. But yeah. I think it all adds up. So um, college, you know, I was a Bigfoot too. I went okay. to uh, Spokane Community College. Very nice. In fact, I started out at University of Idaho for mm -hmm. a couple of years. I just didn't know what to do. Yeah. And so I kept changing major. Mm -hmm. Finally, I wasn't getting anywhere. So I. Moved to Spokane during Expo 74, and yeah. I've been here uh, in this area ever since. Oh, very nice. Yeah, so uh, so one thing you bring when you're running, I mm -hmm. think, is um, for office, uh, of course, you haven't been in government or an elected mm -hmm. before. This is your first race. Uh, there's a lot of trivia to kind of understand. Yes. And there's, you know, so you need people to... Mm -hmm. um, Kind of mentor you a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. If you were to say, uh, "Well, who is Joey August?" Right. You know, or people that started um, uh, the World's Fair here in right. 1974. I remember, I didn't know those people, but I remember hearing their names. So history is kind of important, you know. Yes, and, very uh, much so. So history, I think, for elected officials, they should know that so they don't repeat the Correct. mistakes of the yep. past. Are you a history buff too? I, uh, you know, I history is one of my favorites. I do enjoy all of it. And one of the great things about my um, my business is that uh, you know we write all of our own questions, and so that means that you have to do a lot of studying and um, research to come up with the material that you need. And so I have learned so much more since college than I ever than I ever learned before that because my job is basically I get to sit and read about things that have happened, uh, you know, at different points and times in history, and so. It's mm -hmm. been really, really a great educational experience for me. Well, there's a trivia question. What yeah. is the Tenth Amendment? The Tenth Amendment deals with um, if there's something that doesn't that the federal government doesn't have uh, the authority over, then it goes to the states and the cities, respectively. Yeah, it's about what it says. Yeah, <laughs> roughly. So, yeah. Uh, a lot of people think you know they get into government, and that's one problem mm -hmm. too. 
uh, just about everything you read, mm -hmm. uh, I swear over 90% of it has to do with mm -hmm. the federal government mm -hmm. or, or the national government mm -hmm. in that, uh, I mean, uh, aircraft carriers, the space program, and um, uh, global warming, all that is a lot more interesting, mm -hmm. I think, than uh, what you have at right. the state level, right. even, and even more so at the local level. Yes. Of course, at the local level, a lot of the laws are already written for you mm -hmm. by the legislature, yes. so you don't have a lot of wiggle room mm -hmm. to do, because you want to solve these problems, right. I think, but um, uh, your hands are almost kind of tight, and that's probably uh, good, too. So. Mm -hmm. What would you use, what wiggle room you have, I think, what would you like to achieve if you do become mayor? Well, as mayor, I think I think the biggest thing that we're all really um, looking at right now is, is the homelessness um, issue and dealing with the homeless. And um, one of the things that irritates me about this particular topic is you, you usually get pegged into either being compassionate or tough love. And that's really irritating to me because you can be both compassionate and also require things of people. And I think that you should do that. Uh, you know, with your children, for example, you know, you love your children, but you expect the best out of them. You you expect that um, when they do um, when they do something wrong, you correct it, and then they uh, you know continue their life in that trajectory. And it's not because you you hate your children or you're anti children or anything like that. And so I think it's unfortunate that that's the way that that conversation is being steered. And so for me, I would love to have compassion. So. Um, my parents were pastors. I'm a pretty devout Christian myself. And so I grew up loving and cherishing every single person because every person was uniquely created by God. And so knowing that they are that way, that there is value that goes beyond any one issue in their life. And so specifically with the homeless, they have incredible value to us as a society because they are really, they're a, they're a genetic marvel, right? I mean, unless you're a identical twin, your DNA will really never be duplicated in the history of the world. You are a unique uh, uh, individual and being that was created that will never be again. Mm -hmm. And I want people to understand, again, their value and have that dignity in themselves. And so for me, homelessness, that's probably the biggest thing that I want to attack. Well, I think you think you have to help the helpless, Absolutely. of course, but uh, then again, how do you determine who's helpless mm -hmm. and not? I mean, actions have consequences. Absolutely. A lot of people are in the, the you know, the environment they created mm -hmm. themselves. So Absolutely. I guess you'd say, how do you find that balance? That's kind of hard. Well, so it is It is a tough balance. And so finding people who want to help themselves, um, those people I think you can easily send in the right direction. And I think that you have great organizations in town like the UGM that are helping to find those who are wanting to help themselves and get them on the right path. Um, what, is, what does UGM stand for? UGM is Union Gospel Mission. We tend so. to, if we're around something, we tend to fall into acronyms yes, so yes. in case anybody... Yes, the Union Gospel Mission, um, you know, who many believe are, are uh, you know, the... Uh, the 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 organization on top, the ones that are that are the uh, the gold standard, if you will, of of helping the homeless. Um, they do a great job. So these are these are some amazing statistics. So last year they had a little over 2,200 people, uh, unique visitors to all of their different. Um, that's not just uh, the mission, but then Anna Ogden and mm -hmm. so all of that. Well, they also had 170 people graduate from their course get jobs in the community and be reintegrated into society. And one of the reasons why they're so successful is because they require things of people. So you have to be sober when you come into our place. Um, when you come into the mission, you have to be sober. And they, they make you do chores. You know, there are certain things that you have to do uh, to be in there. And I think that we as a city could do something very similar. And there's a program that I would like to in, um, implement, which would be that if you are wanting government benefits, they are available to you, but we do require that you do some work. And I think that you can create uh, certain community service projects like cleaning up the parks or cleaning up graffiti. Or I mean, there's there's a lot of things that we can do, but requiring that they do something to receive something from us because as a people, as a city, we are very generous and compassionate, but at the same time, we don't want to be taken advantage of. And I think that there is the balance right there that you can have of both being generous and compassionate and requiring something of people because if if people feel as if well you know people already see me as a piece of garbage I might as well be a piece of garbage mm -hmm. you know but if we show them again how valuable they are and how much we want of them I think those that want to be better and want to be different will rise uh, to the top and will continue in on that way and then I think that will help us to separate those who want help from um, 
you know, the vagrants in town that are really just being becoming a blight on the city. Mm -hmm. Well, some people actually kind of like that lifestyle, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, yeah, I remember even even when I was a little kid, you know, and those are prosperous times in the 50s mm -hmm. and 60s. Uh, there's still hobos yep. that, that like that. You know, they just, um, mm -hmm. they were rolling stones or, yep. you know, uh, watering people. And uh, I think things really changed. You know, I never, when I was a kid, saw anybody on a street corner holding up a sign, mm -hmm. you know, saying uh, homeless vet, you know, right. or, well, you know, I, I really need it. But um, starting about the 1980s, mm -hmm. I started seeing those people uh, appearing, mm -hmm. you know, and now... It's become epidemic, I think, and especially Seattle, but also Absolutely. Spokane yep. too. And so I think that's probably one of the biggest problems because they do interfere with business. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people are sometimes even afraid to go downtown. I know it. And, uh, My wife and I never go downtown, uh -huh. and it's be because of that reason. You know, we had um, a situation in in Seattle about a year and a half ago where we were downtown seeing a concert, and um, on our way back we walked through this area that was just lined uh, with homeless people who matter. You know, we we care about them, but mm -hmm. um, they were acting very erratically for whatever reason and it just terrified uh you know my wife and so oh, yeah. it's just something that we uh you know we prefer to avoid because uh you know you as much as you care about that person you also care about your own personal safety and you're not exactly sure what's going to happen at all times and so we just mm -hmm. avoid it to where we're never in that in that situation which is a detriment to our city downtown spokane because there are lots of great businesses people tell us about that we just will never patronize because we just choose not to go downtown yeah well they, they are trying to do some urban renewal mm -hmm. i guess you know fixing uh, places up in Spokane, but it, it's a continuing battle. And yeah. being a businessman yourself, absolutely, you can kind of understand mm -hmm. you know what they're going to. And of course, also being uh, having been uh, 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 pastor's mm -hmm. kid, you're not wild, yes. are you? Okay. No, no, no. I was one of the good. I was one of the good ones. I know. <laughs> okay. I I actually. Well, I mean, Jesus the said you'll have the poor with you all. Right. So absolutely. No matter what you do, it's mm -hmm. kind of like Sisyphus rolling the rock up the hill. There's, there's always going to be that strata of, uh, of poor people, yeah. but it doesn't have to be that way, especially right. younger people. Absolutely. Um, I remember they, they have a couple of cool water mm -hmm. in downtown, and uh, there, a lot of the homeless people actually are our kids. Yes. You know, where else do they go? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can feel sorry for a child, but not for an adult or an adult. I guess if they're not a reason, have reason, or right. a mind, you know, not a full mind, right. that's another problem. Too. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and and that's one of the things that you that you know is is a, a a big tenet of Christian faith is to take care of those who can't take care of themselves. So Jesus said, "Help the widows and the orphans," who are mm -hmm. people who uh, you know needed a lot of help, um, and I think it's unique that he pointed out those two categories because again, it does it does go to people who can't. Um, help themselves. That's not to say that all people don't don't matter and shouldn't receive some aid uh, because they're humans because they should. But um, most of our efforts should be focused on those who can't help themselves. For example, uh, you know those who are uh, mentally ill, you know, mm -hmm. and and need help and don't know how to help themselves. I think they require a lot of. Um, aid from the city and I think that we should be giving it. Uh, those who are addicted to drugs are, are really in a prison of their own uh, you know, creation of I have started doing this, I can't stop. They require some help and, and I think that we should be helping them. Um, anybody who just chooses to have that lifestyle, I don't know that you should uh, you know, receive benefits from the taxpayer. Well, welfare, I think, should probably be as local as it can be. Absolutely. Getting back to the Tenth Amendment, we talked yes. about well, there's nothing in the Constitution mm -hmm. about you know helping the poor, health, education, or welfare, right. for that matter, too. Right. Those are left to the, uh, the peoples in the counties and the cities and the states, mm -hmm. you know. And, of course, they're closer to the problems, too. They, I would never want to have been a social worker or mm -hmm. a policeman, but mm -hmm. they see a darker side of life than I, yes. I wanted to see. Yeah. But coming to Spokane, you're going to see that anyway. Right. And it, it kind of... Uh, reaches out and touches you anyway. Mm -hmm. So what other things besides homelessness do you think are so, something you want to take on? Uh, other things that I want to take on are um, our, uh, taxes. I want to make sure that we are not only taking as little as possible from the citizen, but also with what we have been um, given, okay, or what we have taken from the citizen really, um, is stewarded well, you know, so that we don't have any waste. And this is the thing that as a business owner, I, I bring a unique perspective to this and not just a business owner, but somebody who has depended on my business for seven years. Not I had a side business or anything like that. I have depended on my business uh, for seven years. You know how precious every dollar is because 
being self-employed, you might not have clients tomorrow. And so should I take this money and should I invest it in the future? Should I pay down debts? Should I save it for a rainy day? What I mean, you understand the value of every single dollar. And so every dollar that comes into the city would be one that would be taken care of and, and treated as precious because they are, especially when other people don't have a say in in uh, those monies being taken from them. Well, I think that's good from business because you know what regulates business really is profit and loss. Yes. So you want to make sure everything you do mm -hmm. is lean. Okay, it's either yep. adding value or yep. adding waste. So what yep. do you see uh, that Spokane does as a city currently that adds value to people living here? I think one of the one of the really cool things that we're doing right now. I really love the Hacking Washington program. So Hacking Washington is one that they created to. Um, to show people that there's an alternative to the west side of the state. And so mm -hmm. Hacking Washington, what it does is it shows, you know, the the great culture that we have in, in Washington. And then, uh, you know, they find out that everything is really funneling them towards Spokane because it's much cheaper to live here than it is in the west side. There is so much greenery and beauty and hiking and, and lakes and everything um, around Spokane that's just so great. And it's constantly funneling us. Uh, all the mountains that we have for people to ski and, and snowboard, um, all of that, I I really like the Hacking Washington program. I'm, I'm so does that, that bring more people too? Uh, it, so uh, my understanding is that they have they've had some really encouraging results from people um, coming back to um, mm -hmm. Spokane, and it's it it is also so they also because of LinkedIn, you know, mm -hmm. uh, social media is a wonderful thing in in some ways. Uh, LinkedIn gives us the ability to see people who are in. Um, Seattle or uh, Tacoma or what any anywhere over there that were originally from Spokane and it gives us the ability to almost market Spokane to them and get young professionals to come back uh, to Spokane. Well, I say a lot of the businesses would think the more the, more the merrier. Absolutely. Uh, but then again, people, a lot mm -hmm. of people moved here because it wasn't uh, Silicon Valley right. or the, the density to mm -hmm. and uh, I think if you look at the map of Washington State, mm -hmm. you know, you see um, it's it's not so much east versus west, it's mm -hmm. urban versus rural, okay. the red and blue thing. Sure. So I think maybe it's density mm -hmm. that causes, um, you know, if you're living closer to your neighbor as opposed to having 40 acres, right. maybe you need more laws mm -hmm. to, to get along. Too. Absolutely. And I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. I think the reason why you have is you have just so much more interaction with people. You have more opportunities for things uh, to, to be done that are bad. And so then you have to address those more often than in a rural area. Mm -hmm. How how do you view the, view the environment? I mean, that seems like that's a big uh, thing on um, you know the si current city council absolutely list absolutely huh? um, not just being a young person but you know my generation deeply cares about the environment but this gets back to uh, you know my, my my personal beliefs but <laughs> if this was created by God I believe that we should take care of it well um, taking care of it well however versus government overreach this is a balance that you have to have whereas the EPA was started because we weren't taking care of the earth very well so the Cuyahoga a river caught on fire 10 mm -hmm. times in a hundred year span. A river caught on fire 10 times because we weren't taking care. Um, we, were, we were polluting it so much. And so I believe that we should take care of it. At the same time, there is a, a, thin, a, there is a, a, a balance to walk between what is taking care of the environment and what is you running my life. So you, you would balance the uh, needs of the environment uh, with property rights? Absolutely, with the uh, needs of the people. So uh -huh. um, because you do have certain rights and, and I think that um, uh, to maintain those rights, you have to have a balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the, um, the looks like they're, they're redoing Riverfront Park mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people liked it better <laughs> the yeah. old way, but then you know, there's always change. What, yeah. what do you think of that? Is that something the city should be doing? You know, I'm not I'm not intimately uh, familiar with the with the process and how everything went, but I I kind of like the fact that my city is getting prettier. Okay, mm -hmm. I like certain things that they're doing. So on um, on a street by by my house, they you know put some medians in that had some trees and some flowers and stuff like that, and and I kind of you know like that. And so mm -hmm. if that was where a portion of my uh, you know tax dollars were going, I'm not opposed to it. Now mm -hmm. again, I am opposed to overspending and those things, but. You know, I, I like my city being pretty. I like being able to take my, uh, you know, my wife, you know, and, and going for a walk, you know, and, and really enjoying the scenery around me. So, 
Well, um, of course, you're from Hilliard. Yes, I so, am. So, uh, and uh, people are very proud of yes. being a, a member of Hilliard, mm -hmm. or some people might call it Dogtown. Right. You know, but, but they take that Hills a, Yard. A badge of honor. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I was in Army Reserves there in the 1970s. Oh, very nice. And, uh, you know, some guys went to Vietnam, some mm -hmm. guys went to Iraq, and I drove a dump truck around Hilliard. Yeah. You know, was was my service at the yeah. time. But, uh, it used to be more of a vibrant area, mm -hmm. and maybe it's because they used to call Spokane the railroad city. Well, then to make Riverfront Park, they pulled out a lot of the railroads. Mm -hmm. Things just weren't shipped as much as they used right. to be, I guess. And um, I think that probably hurt Hilliard. So yes. if you look at the buildings in Hilliard, it's almost like they're missing teeth or something. Mm -hmm. you know, there's vacant spots yeah. there. So how do you um, how do you get things going again? How do you make Hill, Hill finding the right balance? You know, mm -hmm. having jobs and all that, uh, yes. but also keeping the flavor of Hilliard. So as a businessman, I believe that there's a lot of ways that you can um, get people to go into areas like that without the government having to be involved. Um, if you can um, sell to them the benefits of the area, you know how, because business people are, are profit driven, so if you can show a path to profit and a path to, uh, um, uh, you know, success in those areas, I think that you would find that they get revitalized uh, by the community without the government needing to step in and do it. Now, with your business, is it a brick and mortar business? No. Is there, it's all on the internet, and that yep. seems to be one of the problems, people yes. don't seem to be going to the stores. Yes. Uh, a lot of these, um, you know, bigger, uh, uh, stores, Shopco mm -hmm. and Sears and Penny's are all having their problems and shutting down. I think because you've, the internet is changing. Absolutely. And, so, yeah. and we, so we're not brick and mortar, um, but we do have an office building um, because we, you know, like lawyers meet with clients, you know, and so it's not like, hey, let's meet in a coffee shop, you mm -hmm. know, but it's, you know, meet at our, meet at our office building. So um, I do feel for, um, you know, the brick and mortar companies because they're definitely up against some, some challenges that they you know, weren't facing 15 or 20 years ago. Yeah, well, one of the problems I've heard the most about mm -hmm. is, and that has to do with the influx of people, Spokane County is mm -hmm. uh, over 500,000 people yes. now. Is, um, uh, especially, a lot of people are moving here because it's, it, is a, it is a better place. Yes. They're tired of the traffic in yeah. Seattle or Portland yeah. or California, and they're, they're moving here. So, But the biggest problem I heard was people complaining about the arterials yes. are uh, jammed, you know, yep. and suddenly, you know, it used to be a straight shot into the freeway, and mm -hmm. now there's, it's getting to be like, uh, you know, at the west side of the coast, you know, yeah. it is. So, uh, I think, of course, that's really, you know, kind of like the roads department, mm -hmm. department of transportation, but you, you have to, I think, um, as mayor work with other the legislators especially yep. so do you know any of the legislators at all um have you in met town? Yeah, in town I, yeah i've met with several of them i mean i don't know especially any of them especially personally. the third district you have andy billig right state senator and right. uh, tim ormsby and mm -hmm. uh, marcus riccelli then the sixth district you know you got jeff holy right and those guys yeah mm -hmm. that are have a foot in the city yes city too yes huh? i i like i said i don't know any of them personally but i have met with uh, with several of them and i i respect the work that uh, many of them are doing and i would encourage them to do that because as a city uh, certain problems um you you can't really address from specifically from a city uh, perspective, because the state has laws that you know you're you know are, you're in conflict with to to do what you believe is best for the city, and so having good uh, relationships with the state representatives is is essential, and you're going to have to work not just with the city but also with the state. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh, running for mayor, several people already yes. in the race. It's a much desired position, yes. I guess. Uh, Dave Condon is yep. leaving. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Dave Condon was the first two-term mayor yes. uh, in a long time. Like 40 so years, guess, 50 years. Sounds yeah. like the gypsy curse is over you know, <laughs> that, that they had there. Yeah. Um, so how are you going to win? You're, you're not really well-known. Right. Do you have, uh, uh, I, of course, being on shows like this, mm -hmm. and I suppose you plan on going to like the neighborhood councils yes. and you know, being uh, show your face around. Absolutely. And that's really what it is. Uh, you know, a lot of the campaigning is just getting in front of people because uh, one of the things that I know about myself is that when I am with people, they understand how important they are and how much they matter, not just to me, but to their families and to the city. Um, and so the, for me, a lot of the work is going into how can I get in front of people? And so that's, uh, that's really the plan at this point. Events, uh, you know the the uh, city council meetings, the the uh, the precinct uh, meetings, 
everything that I can do, neighborhood council meetings, everything that I can do to get in front of people. So if people run for city council, they just have to worry about their yes. particular, uh, there's three sections, yep. I guess. And uh, But Mary, you got to worry about the whole yeah. thing. That's, uh, you know, well over 200,000 people. I know it. You've got to go out and see yes. and convince. Well, the thing is, is that with it being a nonpartisan race, I really appreciate that because I have some pretty deeply held uh, personal beliefs, but I understand that my beliefs don't run the city. Mm -hmm. um, it is the people and what, uh, you know, the will of the people in many ways, what we want together as a community, that's how we're going to run the city. And so I have no agenda. I have no political party uh, that, I, that I subscribe to that I'm going to be this over that because every issue is unique. Every issue requires its own set of reasonings and, and, and thinking. Um, and so regardless of whether or not it lines up with a particular party, whatever's the right thing to do for Spokane mm -hmm. is absolutely what I will do. Well, you look like you're in good shape. Are you a runner? No, okay. so I, uh, I play softball, okay. uh, you know, and uh, so shout out to all my softball people out there. We. Uh, uh, I have a good time and I, I, I'm somewhat fast and so I usually get put in the outfield and so it's, you can almost say I'm a runner because you're just running constantly oh. in the in the outfield. Well, I come so. from a long line of right fielders. Oh yes, I'm in the outfielder because you know no one ever hit it in the <laughs> field usually. So, yeah, so it would stir up the clouds a lot. And, you know, but I, I could hit. Yeah. So I guess rounding the bases, then you'd be rounding the neighborhoods. Yes, absolutely. And uh, and I do have the stamina and the endurance to meet it. And so uh, trust me, I am coming to your uh, to your neighborhood, and I would love to to meet with you and and answer any questions that I can because you matter. You know your experiences matter and I want to hear from you. Okay, anything else you'd like to add before we uh, sign off, Jonathan? I would just like to say that I have a, a passion and an enthusiasm that I don't think is really matched by any of my competitors. And I mean no disrespect to anybody else, but this mm -hmm. is just naturally who I am. This energy level that I have comes with everything that I do. And I just really, really love this city. And I want to champion the causes of this city to make Spokane, Spokane. We are not Seattle. We are not Portland. We are not LA or San Francisco. We are Spokane. We have our own unique environment vibrant identity and I want to champion that uh, for the people of Spokane to where we don't become some clone of another city but that people realize Spokane is the destination Spokane is a place that I want to live and raise my family because it is so special okay well I think you know you, you know about trivia and all that yes. but you almost have to learn the trivia and mm -hmm. you will learn it yes. as you get in there as you're um, you know jump into the, mm -hmm. the kettle and yes. uh, uh, everything happens but most important is who you are, mm -hmm. who you're bringing, you know, yes. and your character. Yes. I think is especially important. So yes. I think that you're a good character, Jonathan. Thank you. And we need your Thank your you. uh, your energy, especially mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. and your mind too, yeah. and uh, the experience you've had. So this has been uh, cutting to the chase, and thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you. This has been cutting to the chase with Rob Chase where we cover anything under the sun that would be of interest to you, our viewers. Cutting to the Chase has been brought to you by the InlandNorthwestReport.com, alternative news and opinion for the Inland Northwest. Don't forget to catch our Sunday edition of Cutting to the Chase, where Rob will interview local pastors on Christian perspectives. Until next time, stay in prayer for God, family, and country. <laughs>